Welcome back guys, another NVM vlog and in this vlog we'll be fitting this baby right here. It's a stage 3 big turbo kit for the N55 and we'll show you the installation, show you the rest of the kit, the mapping and get it all set up on our shot car which is the NVM2. So as you can see it's a full kit, so that includes the manifold, obviously the turbocharger, the engine mount, the charge pipe, the water coolant pipe, the downpipe, the intake, all the silicon hoses, clamps, brackets, obviously oil lines, everything you need to fit to an N55 engine. It is right and drive compatible and that's the reason why we adopted this kit for our car. The M2 is a lot tighter, it's got a bit more you know, coolant lines and oil lines and kind of everything in your way basically. So this kit was specifically designed for the M2 and that's why we've decided to fit this. So we'll get it stripped down, take the original turbo off and we'll see the comparison and then build it back up, map it and see where we're at. So guys, the lads are taking off the downpipe, all the ancillaries, kind of engine mount brackets, um, intake and stuff like that. Um, literally a couple of bolts left on the turbo and then we'll pull it out. Compare the difference with the old turbo, the new turbo, transfer, transfer over the wastegate um, because we're reusing the electronic wastegate and then start bolting it all back together. We'll probably start mapping at about one bar of boost just to get everything where it needs to be and then build it up um, based on that. Um, we will be running 99 run fuel while Tesco 99 momentum is what's in the tank and we'll be mapping on that solely and then we'll add the kind of meth and add the high pressure fuel pump and the low pressure fuel pump and kind of see where we, what powers we can hit. So guys that's the stock turbocharger um, removed from the M2. The N55 turbocharger is made by Borg Warner. It did start life as a pneumatic wastegate controlled um, turbocharger and they later moved on to the electronic wastegate um, and this was in about 2014 um, and the main reason for that is because the back pressure created and the wastegate adjustment required um, wasn't that efficient it did make 306 horsepower but we even tuning them we've seen you know maximum 370 uh, brake horsepower they then revised the turbocharger to include an electronic wastegate they changed the exhaust housing to make it a little better um, and reduce back pressure and that did help and that kind of bumped up the stock figures to about 326 brake horsepower and we tuned them to about 400 brake horsepower max and that was literally the, the end of that turbo until the m2 came the m2 came and they redesigned the turbo fold although the set the port size is exactly the same within there there was a bit more space and that reduced the back pressure furthermore the actual compressor and the you know the turbine was exactly the same size so there's no benefits there but it's mainly down to the turbo fold so a lot of the hybrid um, turbos that are out on the market use the m2 turbo fold as a base to kind of build a bigger compressor wheel etc um as said, hybrid turbos can't be compared to this, but we, you know, we're gonna give you a rough comparison. Um, the major kind of concern for this turbo was the port size. I mean, the cylinder head is about, exhaust ports are about 46 mil, but the stock ones are about 32, and that's because of this, this design here. It was used mainly for kind of, it's independent strength. strength. I don't know if you guys can see how it's ported together, the actual, Manifold itself is stainless steel um, and it's got individual ports rather than a complete log like that. But the main disadvantage was 
the port size, utilising this kind of gasket sealing system on the cylinder head. Um, and obviously Big Boost kind of rectified that with a 46mm um, exhaust port for all their turbos. Obviously the, the compressor wheel is, is huge compared to the stock. I mean the stock is about 46mm and the 3.3 Big Boost turbo kit is about 61mm. Um, the exhaust turbine as well is absolutely huge and very efficient. It does come with that adapter plate to step down to a three inch exhaust. Um, and as you can probably see, the stock turbine is a bit gutless. Um, but yeah, that's the main differences. Obviously, the completely different turbochargers, but the reason why this kind of has a efficient back pressure and spools really well is because of its design of its manifold uh, more than anything. And that's the reason why we kind of backed off the, the hybrid turbo development um, for the M2 and the M55 is because the efficiency um, within the turbo fold is only so much you can get. I mean, we've seen a maximum of about 520 horsepower and then it started getting inconsistent. So, yeah, that's a bit of an explanation. So what we're going to do, we're going to transfer over the, the electronic wastegate to the new turbo, um, set it up, fit the turbo charger, fit all the ancillaries and then take it from there. started and have a look underneath so guys that is the big boost stage 3 3.3 6159 turbocharger installed on our right and drive BMW M2 um, got it up to temperature, made a few adjustments, I don't know if you can see the silicon pipes, the routing, um, slight difference to engine mount spacing, but other than that it was a straight install. Um, very, very happy with how it sits, it is very close to everything, I don't know if you can see the steering arm there, um, the engine block, but it is probably the biggest turbo you can get on the N55, right hand drive anyway, because obviously the left hand drive you have, I've got the steering column to worry about. So we'll make sure everything's tight and where it should be and then we'll get it on the dyno, do a base run and start building a map. On the video but basically I've watered the run we literally ran out of fuel at 417 horsepower and 688 Nm meters literally uh, the turbo spooled up we got a good spool so we closed the wastegate nice and early and we got a good spool about three and a half thousand rpm um, but we kind of run out of fuel and that's you know keeping it kind of rich and being safe with the car and the calibration so I'm just gonna make a few adjustments to the calibration run a bit leaner than what we normally do 
um, so that the fuel pressure stays where it wants to be. Add a bit more time in and see if we can get a clean 99 run pull. It is going to be quite difficult and not many people have done it. We'd rather do a 99 run clean pull and then turn the meth on and then add the pump and see the limitations of what we got there. So let's get it back on. Three brake horsepower, 617 newton meters. Again, these ain't, these ain't targets. These are just experiments that we're doing on the stock fueling system, um, just to find the limitations. But we definitely need um, additional fuel and additional cooling as well. Um, the intake temperatures ain't that high, but we are at the fueling limit now for the vehicle based upon this setup on the turbo. You've got to understand when you run boost and a bigger turbo, you're running a lot more air, so you do struggle with the fuel to support supply there we're running down to about 120 um, bar of fuel pressure which is on the limit so we'll have some meth and see how we get on That's uh, MEF, CM10 single nozzle and pump 99 um, with a 1.1 bar of boost and we're at 475 brake horsepower, 624 newton meters. It looks like this might be the limit for a single nozzle, so we're actually gonna take we're actually gonna take the charge pipe off. Um, and we might also take the intake pipe off because we're getting a bit of a high reading on the mass airflow sensor So we just got to have a look at that um, compared to the boost that we're getting um, We'll take the charge pipe off and probably add another nozzle um, And get it back on the dyno and add more boost So guys as you probably seen a um, bit of an issue with fueling so we've added a meth bung um, Come over to Rush Earth Performance Specialist kind of engineering stuff it's absolutely amazing, how's it? Hi, lad. How you doing, Matt? You're right. Yeah, come on in. Um, didn't get to video this yesterday, but as you can probably see, I'll give you a quick walk around. Not every day you see a garage with a CNC machine in there. Mint. And upstairs there's 3D prototyping, printing, and all of that. This is his beast R32 Mark IV. What size turbo again? Three, seven, I thought my turbo was big. Look at this. Amazing. Anyway, we've had some bits done. So we've had the pipe extended because um, it was pulling out on boost and we've had a meth bong put in and the oil return, we've had it skims on the CNC machine to get it 100% flat so there's no leaks. I don't know if you guys can see, but you probably see it, yeah. It wasn't seating 100% correctly and that caused a bit of a tilt on the seating which caused a little leak it wasn't nothing major um, but we didn't put much boost through there to cause an issue but um yeah matt thank you very much for this again you'll probably see more of matt because we're bringing the car back down here to get everything kind of sorted and how we want it um because the kit was made for a left hand drive and we've adapted it as much as we can for the right and drive system um and it's very close to everything so we need to kind of Give it the Rushworth treatment, I think, and wind the boost up.
So there we have it. Double nozzle has made a massive difference. Um, although intake temperatures ain't that high today, um, it's creeping up to about the 30 degrees. We're looking for fuel fill, which is what the water does. Um, so the additional nozzle that we've just added, um, thanks to Matt, has uh, enabled us to hit 519 um, brake horsepower, 676 newton meters. Um, the good thing is this still maintains good fuel pressure on the high pressure fuel pump, so we can add a bit more um, and see what we can do. Results are in 542 brake horsepower, 707 newton meters. If you look at the delta gain, it is immense. It's going to translate to a really quick car on the road. We are at the stock high pressure fuel pump limit. I mean, fuel pressures are dropping to about 140 bar, even with the two jets. So we're not going to give it anymore. Literally, this is what we wanted to do. We wanted to find the limits of the stock fuel pump, the stock fuel pump with the meth, and obviously the turbo itself. So what we're going to do now, we're going to change it over to the XDI 35 high pressure fuel pump, turn off the meth, find the limits of that, and then they add the meth. Before that, you guys are going to have to like, comment, and subscribe, because that's coming in part two.